went into ocean modeling many years ago and made a career out of it. And I love what I do. I love my job. So I develop and use biogeochemical models for the ocean. They are sort of the ocean analogs to atmospheric models used in weather prediction. Just that we're dealing with water instead of the atmosphere. And so the models I'm working with describe ocean circulation, ocean currents, ocean temperature and salinity, but also other important ocean variables. So basically we have a computer code that we Im implement on one of the Compute Canada computers in order to stay on the leading edge of the research internationally. We need to have access to state-of-the-art computing resources. So computers are my main tool. We simply couldn't do it without the resources that Compute Canada has to offer. Through global warming, there's um, a trend of declining oxygen in the ocean, which is a concern. We humans have put a lot of CO2 into the atmosphere since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. And the ocean has taken up about a quarter to a third of that CO2 from the atmosphere. This dissolved CO2 fundamentally alters ocean chemistry. One consequence of that is that ocean water becomes more corrosive to calcium carbonate. And calcium carbonate is the material of which shells and skeletons of many marine organisms consist. So the ocean becoming more corrosive to this material will have consequences for coral reefs, for example, but also for other species, clams, mussels, oysters, that we care about and like and value and that have economic value. Oxygen is also declining in the St. Lawrence estuary, has been for decades and is projected to decline further. And basically when oxygen reaches critically low levels, that means animals can't breathe anymore. Animals are stressed or they can even die. The truth is that Despite all these technological advances that we have made in terms of ocean observation, we are not properly observing the ocean. It's too big, it's changing too quickly. And mathematical models can help fill in the gaps. The models that we develop allow us to better understand what the present conditions are, what the factors are that drive variations, and they also allow us to project into the future what will conditions look like 50, 100 years from now. And then of course we're interested in making the connection to species that will be affected by this likely and um, understand what the potential consequences are.